roads along this bayou. It's only about maybe eight feet to nine feet deep in the middle. People fish in it sometimes, and if it was a nice day, you'd see kayaking and paddle yes. boating in it. Part manatees. No manatees, but every once in a while we'll see alligator. an alligator. Yep. Oh. Is that, that's like the lake? This yeah. is actually more fresh water, but it does go into the lake, which is brackish water. And the lake is, parts of it are more salty than other parts. This is a little more fresh because it gets a lot of rainwater in here, and it really does have locks that go to the lake. So we can close it off when the water gets high. In fact, they have brand new locks. We have old locks and new locks of this bayou. Um, it's uh, lots of ducks and geese and swan you'll see along here. And when I was saying alligator, that's good alligator uh, bait right there. <laughs> Gator food. Gator food. I have to tell you, and little baby ducks lately, I've been seeing lots of little baby ducks. Alligators. They're in the swamp. They're all over. Every once in a while, I don't know they hate how they get in here, but we find them. And I know there's one living in here because my, my daughter lives around the curve of the bayou, and she said he hides under one of the bridges, huh. and he's getting bigger. Now, if he gets really to a big, well, big, eating. too big, um, the wildlife and fisheries. But they hide. They smart. They're more afraid of people than we are. Mm -hmm. You know, they are, they're afraid of us. And, um, and alligator meat, I say we eat alligator, I would never go to the store and buy an alligator to eat. You know, it's something they serve to tourists, I think, you know, you want to try alligator. It's not, it's, it's sort of chewy, they cook it down in a sauce and make a sausage out of it. I mean, it's good, but you would never, you think it's chicken, you know? It's yeah. like, what's it taste like? Chicken. Yeah. Like a little fishy chicken. But um, it, 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 it's expensive. It's like $10 a pound. So it's like I wouldn't go buy it anywhere to eat it. Now, as we go along, too, let me tell you uh, some stories. We're going to be coming up to a lovely subdivision. Does he have a lady he's calling us about? Uh, I don't know anything about me. Uh, I think you just go back and do your thing there at the hotel. Okay, no, it's not. I was hoping nobody was calling us about a lady was missing. <laughs> Um, as we continue on, this is a brand new bridge, it's still not open yet, it's closed, but you see how low to the water it is? Purposely they build them low to the water to keep motorized boats out of them. And when we cross this intersection, there's a beautiful subdivision over here that backs up to the bayou, and there are million dollar homes along here, and they did get water. They got water from a canal that came this way, it was called the London Avenue Canal. And then coming this way, we got the 17th Street Canal. But I want to show y'all, look at the back of these homes. And sometimes you'll see a little boat along the water's edge. It's called Park Island. And the art is from the World's Fair. That's the Wonder Wall ran along the fair. And when it closed, people bought the artwork from the fair. And those people, the leaves were put up after. It's sort of hard to see with all the trees. But isn't that pretty? Really neat. And built a little bulkhead. You're responsible for your little bulkhead. You don't get a lot of, uh, you know, change in this water except for the rain, actually, that sometimes gets higher. And, and then they can pump it out. It was along this bayou that Marie Laveau used to practice voodoo. She was the voodoo queen of New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, there have been movies written, uh, made about her. There's been books. And there's also been uh, songs, you know. But she was a free woman of color. She was a hairdresser by trade. And the stories are so interesting. I don't know. Some are facts. Some are fiction. I love to tell the story that she was to uh, uh, go to your home to do your hair. But while she was there, she made friends with all the help. So she paid the cooks, the boat, boatless, the chauffeurs. And then after she did your hair, she'd read your poem and tell you exactly what was happening in your life. You know, she thought she, she had magical powers. Tim, I want to look at the sign. If this is Mirabeau, we're going to take a right here. I just got to check the light myself, I mean the sign myself, because this is a little detour we're making. Looks like This yeah. is Mirabeau, we'll take a right here. We're going to go over the bayou here, we're going to go over to Gentilly and show you that area. I don't know if y'all have done any work in Gentilly, but that's another area that is coming back, and it's Holy Cross that I want to show you that they duplicated from the old Holy Cross to um, move to Gentilly. New. This is a new bridge we're going over, and we're going to go straight, and eventually, Tim, we will make a left, but I think it's not this light, but the following light will be taking the left. So this neighborhood, Gentilly, suffered a lot of damage. Coming back, the school that I went to as a high school, you know, most of our Catholic high schools are all girls' schools and all boys' schools, and our public schools are co-ed. 
and we still are about 35% Catholic in the city of New Orleans. That's the uh, majority, the main religion still, and that's because it was brought here by the Europeans. The French and the Spanish, they baptized everybody Catholic. Even their slaves were baptized Catholic. And in fact, under the Code Noir, which was a coding under the French and the Spanish that had rules and regulations about everything in the city and a lot of regulations about slavery, was so different because under the European rule, the slaves were not allowed to be worked on Sunday. Sunday was a day of rest for everyone. Nobody worked. Slaves couldn't gather in the city. They gathered one block out of the city on Basin Street, and that area today is where Armstrong Park is. It was called Congo Square. In Congo Square is where people would gather and dance and sell up crops that they brought, brought uh, different little instruments they made. We say the rudimentary beginnings of jazz, which we are the birthplace of jazz, started in Congo Square with those sounds and instruments and singing and dancing that went on. This whole green grass area here, this all brought me to the nuns that taught me had a mother house here, but it went underwater. They didn't have as many lens left to rebuild this mother house, and they were moved to Baton Rouge. So this green grassy area, I don't know what they plan on the doing with it now. Demolish. We'll see some going along. Don't, don't demolish. Some back. Some boarded up. I'm going to take you over to um, this next light. We'll take a left, and that's Paris Avenue, and that'll take us over in front of the university that got, I mean, the high school, Holy Cross. FEMA gave them $40 million if they would rebuild their historical building, their building as the historical building was built. So it's amazing. It's a replica, but it's new, of their old high school. And it really gave a new rebirth to this neighborhood. You'll see on the right, we do have this little section that has come back as far as some stores, um, some not rented, some that are open. But I'll show you another one that's completely has been abandoned and hasn't come back. When you see an empty lot, there were houses. And we'll make this left on Paris. That was a Is that really? I yeah. thought that was somebody's no. car going on. That's his phone. Now, we're not going to go straight, but if y'all look straight ahead and the street sort of goes up, that is a canal called the London Avenue Canal, which is a drainage canal that water is, goes off the street into these catch basins in the street. In fact, I'll show you some. And the water goes into the, that canal one of the, in this neighborhood, and that canal broke many different places on both sides. So it got this side of the neighborhood, it got the other side of the neighborhood, and um, it was truly, this is a very another hard hit neighborhood. However, these houses, you notice most of these are more of your ranch style houses, uh, one level. See what this one boarded up, not back yet, one back in. You're supposed to, now, by this time, the trailers are gone. And if you're not in your house, some people have gotten extensions, but there has to be certain, like they have to prove that they haven't gotten their money, they're still fighting, they are going to try to come back. Church here, totally gone. So if you're not back, like this little house, this is what you got to do. Keep your grass cut and board up your windows. Look, one of the boards fell off the windows. Or take it down. Road home is a government entity that came in and would pay you up to $150,000 to buy you out. And it was supposed to be an incentive. If you got that $150,000, you had to either uh, sell them your house or say that you were going to take that hundred and fifty dollars and rebuild and use it as a, a part of a replacement on a house. You could buy some somewhere else if you wanted to, but you were supposed to use it within three years. Now look at these on the right. You can see the water went past their gutters. So these houses had it up in their roofs, in their attics. You know, we don't store anything under because we are below sea level, so we don't have basements underneath us. We have attics above. And this is the school coming up on your left that has been completely rebuilt. This is Holy Cross High School. And my high school was behind it where the Sisters of St. Jo Joseph taught and they, uh, they sold out and it's not there anymore. They just teach now in Baton Rouge. 
beautiful, isn't it? It is beautiful. They were living in uh, trailers, going to school in trailers. And trailers, it looks like they, they've been removed. And so, that you know, they were up here just a couple of weeks ago. So they just cleared this area. I don't know what this is going to be. But they've got all the property behind them. So this really is great for this neighborhood. And Tim, if we can pick it up, we really got to pick it up a little bit. As far as the... Um, Back by one. Can we go a little faster on the key? Well, I'm going to get because of the fire. Yeah, this okay. thing just this thing don't go go like a car. Okay. And I'll rock them back. I just didn't know if you heard me. I didn't yeah, hear. I heard you, but. Okay. Then. All right. Yeah. We're going to take, take a left at that light up there. This is a new high school, y'all, that just opened. This is a public high school and state of the art. Isn't it beautiful? We don't have as many schools that are open, but the ones that we do that have opened so far, they have been really just excellent. And this is the this is sad. This my husband is we're in the restaurant and business supply business and this guy called him to get all kind of prices of doing things in here. And I think he got some federal money, this guy, and he left town and never did a thing on this mall. So he'll be hunted down if he hasn't been already. Because people did come in and take advantage of the whole system. And we're taking a left on Robert E. Lee. Now as we go along Robert E. Lee, the area on your right, Lake Terrace. And if we went behind us, it would be Lake uh, Oaks, and in front of us is going to be Lake Vista and then Lake Shore. All of this on the right is what we call reclaimed land. Because at one time, Robert E. Lee was the closest street we had to the lake. We're six blocks from Lake Pontchartrain at this point. During the 1930s, men were hired. They built a seawall in the shallow part of the lake, which is Sandy Bottom. And then they put a seawall in the water and pumped land out and develop this land on the right side. So the right side, all along as we go, you'll have underground wiring. Where on the left side, you'll notice the post and we have above the ground wiring. It's a little different on the left than on the right. The right was developed later than the left. And we're coming back over and we're going to cross back over the bayou as we head um, back towards the lakefront area in my neighborhood. I'll get to show you my neighborhood. So a levee on your right, a mound of mud, that's a, that's a man-made levee. There's small little locks that you'll see on the right. These are the old locks that go into the bayou and into the lake, but then we have big new locks that are six blocks away that they did along the lakefront. And on your left over here, the big red building we just passed is the old, um, well, it's new, but it's been redone, and it's the... Um, Greek Cultural Cathedral and Museum. Now, crossing the bayou, and this is one of my favorite subdivisions coming up on the left. And Tim, you stay on the left because the trees are going to be very low on the right. You know, especially with the, the rain, it weights them down. So we'll try to stay from under those. Notice this subdivision, lake, this Lake Vista, it's in the shape of a wagon wheel. As we go along, we have houses that are fronting us, but if you look down the streets, the streets go to the back of the houses, and they have little lanes and that go down the front. So I'll show you that. All the streets are named after birds, and the lanes are named after flowers. So this little to your right, this is Ibis, and it'll dead end, and it comes out, cul-de-sac. Some go further than others. Then this little lane right here, they have a little sign where their sign is down, but it'll be a little flower. This is Heron, as you look to the right. And then this little uh, walkway, if we can read it, it'll be a name of a flower. Begonia. This is one of my favorites ever. They got maybe three feet of water. But remember, the sheetrock sucked it up and the insulation sucked it up. So when they came back, they had to cut it back and leave it bare and then redo it in the inside. 
It was laid out in the 1930s. If you look down this street, it goes down to the main middle of the subdivision. It's in the shape of a wagon wheel. The streets come out like shape, like like spokes of a wheel. And in the center is the community center. There are two churches and a school. And this area was so popular that people were buying the smaller little one-story houses and tearing them down to build a new two-story house because they wanted to live in this neighborhood. So this is an affluent neighborhood. It has come back, and uh, the property values here are very good. I mean, I would say a lot here is like $100,000 to get a lot. And so um, the houses, like here, your typical little one-story and next to it a new two-story, as you see. And the park is across the street on the left. Now, when we cross this light, we leave Lake Vista. This is the type of canal that broke. It, this one didn't break, but it held the water on the other side. And this is by my house. This is the Orleans Canal. So look to the left first. And you see this wall I'm talking about. That's the type of wall that was sitting on the metal. And the metal wasn't deep enough. So they put concrete down to protect it and strengthen it. But as we go over this waterway, I want you to look to the right. Because you can see now there are gates at the very end of it. All now, this is new, where we put gates at the mouth of these canals. So now when we have a storm, the water can't be blown back into these canals. So they're protected. And we have temporary pumps that pump the water into the lake now. They're not, all of them, are, some of them are temporary, some are still are the real ones, but we're still working on it. This is, our, this is actually my fire station right here on the right and that brand new big mansion going up on the right. But as we come down, the fire truck must have just come out and gone in because this is where the light. But look at this land on the left. Look how low the ground is. It's lower than the water. So now as we cross this canal, this is the new subdivision, which is Lake Shore. And my neighborhood is on the left called Lake View. And Lake View dates back to the early 1900s. It grew from the cemeteries to Robert E. Lee, and then from Robert E. Lee Lake Vista. So actually, this is my street right here. This is Oregon Boulevard. And just one block down, let me tell you how the water was different. These houses that you look on the left had maybe about seven and a half feet. One block down, they had 10 feet. On this side, it goes up so much that they just got about five and a half feet. That's how fast the land drops down from one side to the other. And Lakeview on your left goes all the way to the end of Canal Boulevard, which goes to the beginning of Canal Street. Canal Street is our main street, from the river to the cemeteries. At the cemeteries, it starts this street coming up where the light is, Canal Boulevard, and Canal Boulevard goes from the cemeteries to right to the lake. So if we went to the right, we would go to Lake Pontchartrain, go over a huge levee, and the lake is a huge urban lake that is 622 square miles. And that's the water that came into New Orleans via the, all the canals. It blew in and it got, it got Gentilly, it got lakefront, uh, but now the uh, industrial canal got the ninth ward and the eighth ward. And then we had the Mr. Go that got St. Bernard. So there were many, many breaks, you know, and overtoppings of these levees. It wasn't just one thing. This is uh, Canal Boulevard. Now, continuing on, we've taken you out as far as we, you know, go are going to, and we're going to start heading back now. I want to show you a school coming up that the principal of this school, who used to be mother, uh, she was a, a sister St. Sister Stevens is now uh, the head of this school on your left, which is a girls Catholic high school called Mount Carmel Academy, taught me in grammar school. She is amazing. This school had, the whole bottom was flooded out. They got volunteers, they dug a well to get the water to wash out the bottom and get kids back in school in the upper levels. They got them back within a year's time going to school. Nothing else was here but the school. Nobody was back. The, all the shopping area was gone, rebuilt. And then we go straight, and Tim, we're going to curve to the left as we come past this light. Over to the right is the levee for the lake, 
and they're working on that now. You can see the cones up there, and they're building the seawall back, and they're building the, um, the walls back. And now we're curving over to the left. Somebody asked me about this wall community with million-dollar homes. We curve to the left. This might be it. Million-dollar homes, and they are back. This is Point to Poncha Train. And then there's another little wall community over here that was new, and they're back. Majority of them are back. However, as we go straight, if we would have gone just straight like this, six blocks is the canal that broke that got me. It's called the 17th Street Canal. And it's been fixed. On the other side of that canal is Metairie, which is in Jefferson Parish. This side is Orleans Parish. That side is Jefferson Parish. And you know, it's as strong as the weakest link of the chain, and the weak, weak link was on my side. Had it been on that side, Lakeview would have been saved because the canal by me didn't break, that Orleans Canal. So it would have held the water coming this way. Now, it might have come this way, but by the time it got to me, it wouldn't have been as strong. This was so violent. This, this canal came in and broke. It was a, a, over a block long that went down, and the water blew houses off of their foundations. So as we go along here, this, these streets, as you, if you look down, will go to the canal that broke, many of them. And all of these homes have um, you know, either been renovated or have been built new or are empty lots. The land on your left I want to talk about because this was where the canal was. Remember I told you it was never on Canal Street? It was here. But I'm going to show you some things as we go along here. I'm going to show you a water line, uh, actually two water lines that you can see. And they'll be on the right-hand side. There's a blonde brick house coming up here. Bailey, you can faintly see the water line. Look to your right on that house. Oh yeah. But one you can see better will be in this block. And Tim, it's that red brick house coming up where the truck is. If you look to the right, look at the door of the driveway and look at the line on it. Oh wow. That's how high the water was that sat for three and a half weeks. Now the water came in over their gutters. It was very violent. So it came in much higher. But then when it finally got sea level, it settled here right underneath the gutters. And the land on your left, this canal, let me tell you a little history about this. You'll notice these trees have been replanted. But at one time, this was an open canal. It was dug from 1832 to 1838. It was six miles long, 60 feet wide, six feet deep. And it was used for over 100 years as a transportational canal to connect the river to the lake. In the 1940s, we needed an interstate out to Lakeview, so they built it out to the beginning of, at the end of the cemeteries that will be coming up ahead. And then this was open, they filled this in, and we fought in Lakeview not to have that interstate built through our neighborhood. So we won, and they made a park out of it. So this is the new Basin Canal Park. The back part of the park where the smaller trees or that was used when they, you know, think of all the trees that went down. They had to cut them up, take them out the streets. They needed a place to put them. So they put them in the back and, and grinded them up. Then the front part of this park coming up, starting right here where this light is, they had to use as a landfill. So when we were let back into our houses or just let back into the neighborhood, we came during the day because there were no lights and we threw everything, our appliances, our clothes, our furniture onto the lawn and then trucks from all over the United States picked that up and brought it right here and they dumped it. So from this part to your left all the way to the interstate was four stories high oh my gosh. with everything that we owned just dumped right there and it sat there for over two years before they could get it to a, they had to lobby to get a landfill to put all this stuff. And the guy that won the, the contract is under investigation right now because he paid lobbyists to get his landfill open. And I'm, it's amazing. Uh, you know, somebody, I you know, have good, it's fighting bad all the time. And he's uh, being investigated by federal um, agents right now. Now, we're going to go straight, Tim, and we're going to get on that interstate straight ahead.